Welcome back to Sikistan and welcome back to Videos and Comments, a series we've been doing for a while now. This comes from Hassan C. He says, how do you feel about EMOB for conditioning? It would be with lightweight, example, kettlebells. Uh, EMOM, every minute on the minute work, whatever you, you want to, to refer to it, isn't great for conditioning but is also great for conditioning. So the biggest issue here is the use of the term conditioning. Uh, what do you consider conditioning? What I consider to be conditioning, although Gurf might consider it to be something similar, is completely different from what a lot of other people would consider it to be. Uh, the problem is in the term itself. So do you mean aerobic conditioning? Do you mean anaerobic conditioning? Do you mean local muscular endurance? Do you mean pain conditioning? Uh, Assuming you mean aerobic conditioning, uh, using every minute on the minute work for aerobic work really isn't great. Uh, so when you consider aerobic conditioning, you're talking about just seeking a physiological adaptation to make you better at processing oxygen. Um, the every minute on the minute stuff really isn't the best thing for it. I think a lot of times when people ask just these questions about conditioning, I think what they're asking is, what is the best conditioning I can do for fat loss? Um, a lot of times people ask these things because most people will know if they're what their sport is or whatever they'll be aware of what kind of conditioning they'll need to do and they won't need to be doing stuff like EMOBs or whatever unless it is you know maybe CrossFit or something but I think a lot of times people are asking what is the best way that I can burn calories you know I think that's what a lot yeah. of times people are looking for I think I think the second most common thing they're asking is mm -hmm. how can I do aerobic conditioning work without having to do aerobic conditioning work yes you know, yes. how can I get better at long distance running without having to run long distances? So in the case of conditioning, what Darren's talking about is, you know, what's, what are the adaptions you're looking for? So does every minute on the minute, let's say you do, you know, five kettlebell snatches every minute on the minute for 20 minutes or whatever. The problem with that is, though, you're not really getting the kind of traditional sense when we say conditioning. We might mean the aerobic conditioning. So we have a lot of different, you know, biological adaptions that happen. You've like influences in your VO2 max, red blood cell counting, red blood cell counting, red blood cell counts. Your red blood cells don't start counting. Uh, <laughs> mitochondrial density, um, particular adaptions in your heart musculature and the ventricles, the changes in those. A lot of times, some parts of those are hypertrophy. Um, lung capacity, uh, oxygen carrying capacity, and all that in relation to the red blood cells, um, you know, muscle fiber distribution as changes from fast switch to slow twitch fibers, uh, lactic acid metabolism, a whole variety of different things are involved in these kind of uh, it's aerobic conditioning, and so there's a lot of different factors involved in this, and a lot of these require specific kinds of training to incur these kind of adaptions. One of the main things you have and one of the main issues you have with EMOBs in relation to increasing aerobic capacity is that the consistency of effort is just not there with the EMOB. So you'll definitely get sweaty, you'll get some um, lactic acid burn in whatever part of your body you're doing these kind of EMOBs on. Uh, you'll probably you'll get kind of that pump in your shoulders, whatever you're doing those kettlebell snatches. But the consistency of, you know, the 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 volume of blood going to your heart, the oxygen carrying capacity, the levels of lactic acid and stuff like that just aren't high enough consistently for long enough. You know, if you compare an EMOB to people doing ultra marathons, which literally takes sometimes like two days straight and they sleep for like five minutes, you know, if you look at the percentage and consistency of actions and physical actions that they're doing in these high level endurance events compared to the EMOBs, I know it's an extreme event, but it's a good way of visualizing it. These EMOBs don't really give you any major benefit for in conditioning. Uh, I'll give you a personal anecdote. For example, we are obviously coming out with some different programs all the time. And we were trialing recently, you know, every minute kind of a extreme or high levels intensity. So extreme sounds way more dramatic. Extreme intensity. Extreme intensity. Mostly of us, uh, so we were trialing high levels of intensity. So 80, 90% of max effort every minute for about 15 to 20 seconds on an assault bike to see if it didn't have kind of specific carryover to jiu-jitsu uh, turns out it doesn't really have a whole lot of carryover so even in that scenario where you're doing kind of 20 30 percent effort on a stationary bike and then you know 15 to 20 seconds as close to max effort for those 20 seconds as possible over the course of 10 to 12 minutes even though for those 10 12 minutes you're still active for that period of time the level of intensity isn't high enough for long enough in that particular zone whereby you'd get a 
kind of positive effect for Jiu Jitsu. So conditioning is very, very specific in a lot of circumstances. So if your sport that you need that conditioning for is kettlebell satches on the minute or whatever it is, then that would be very, very useful to build a lot of capacity. But if you're trying to increase your conditioning for Jiu Jitsu or whatever, and you're doing like two kettlebell snatches every minute on the minute for 15 minutes, it just will not be useful. Are you saying E-Mob or E-Mob? E-Mob, E-Mob. Sometimes people say E-Mob. E-Mob. Mob. E-Mob. So where would this be useful? To be honest, one of the most useful applications of every minute on the minute work is in the kind of earlier stages or the uh, intermediary stages of skill acquisition. So if you're used to any of the pedagogy literature or any of the kind of skill acquisition or skill coaching stuff, you'll be used to hearing terms like whole part, whole uh, block practice, specific practice. When they're talking about these different forms of teaching, different forms of coaching, most of the time they're talking about it in a work rest kind of one to one ratio thing where you want people to be working for a short period of time, they then rest for a short period of time work for a short period of time and then rest for a short period of time that does things like it keeps the subject very fresh they're not fatigued they're not uh, trying to learn a new movement under fatigue they're also getting a lot of practice in so their overall volume over the course of a session tends to be quite high the other advantage of something like an imam is that you're doing all of your practice at virtually the same level of fatigue and the same level of arousal right so in a lot of uh kind of skill acquisition sessions, the main issue you have is that at the start of the session, somebody isn't really warmed up and they're not really mentally primed or focused to be able to carry out a very high level skill, whether that be a snatch in weightlifting or a certain kind of move in fighting or whatever it is. Then in the middle of the session, they tend to be very well primed. They're really getting to that point where they're they're learning a movement well, they're performing the movement well, and they're going to be able to recall that movement very well. And then after a certain amount of time, whether that be 10 minutes or 20 minutes or 40 minutes, that drops off fairly significantly and they're no longer able to kind of hold it at that level where their speed is high enough or their cognitive awareness is high enough or their reaction time is low enough that they're going to be really performing as best they possibly can. An imam will allow us to get a set amount of work in, get a lot of work done in that time, but we're gonna be fairly fresh, fairly turned on, and well able to go for the whole 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes. So one of the areas I have found the imams useful in relation to weightlifting is sometimes you'll have people who have an issue where they're afraid of lifting a particular weight or they're afraid of getting under a barbell. A lot of times this is in the beginner stages. So this is kind of relation to the skill acquisition part that Fitz is talking about there. So we'll have maybe a lifter who's afraid of getting underneath a snatch or we'll have someone who's kind of clerking a lift a particular weight very very consistently and they've gotten into the habit they've done this a few times where they've clerked this particular weight so what we'll do is we'll find whatever that weight is so let's say it's 80 kilos we'll step way way back from that weight and we'll get something to you know 50 kilos and we'll start it with like a 12 minute emob for maybe doubles or singles for maybe probably singles and we'll work up to 55 and we'll take off a minute and then work up to 60 we'll take off a minute and we'll 65 we'll take off a minute we'll go to 70 take off a minute so far and so on until we get close to it then usually around 75 kilos we'll do one or two singles or whatever whatever minutes we've kind of left that's feasible that we think we can do effectively with good conditioning so around that case in the beginner lifter will probably be able to do like two or three minutes near the end where they'll just do that particular weight and either in that session or a week later we'll end up maxing for that weight and very often people will feel a lot more confident because a lot of times that clerking has just become a habit or you, you don't want to make it automatic you want to make the successful lifts the automatic you don't want to pollute the waters of your technique with clerking lifts and a lot of times people just need that kind of confidence from the repetition but the emob also forces them to kind of get out of their own head a little bit as they don't have the amount of time to be thinking about a particular weight so by the time they get towards the later end of the session with the emobs they're kind of fatigued they're trying to recover they're thinking about just doing the next set they're not worried about the particular weight they're going to lift especially as it gets heavier because there is more immediate demands, more physical demands that are forefront, which take you out of your own head and make you focus more on your current physical condition. Uh, the other time we have EMOBs being useful is sometimes when a weightlifter is coming from maybe a GPP phase, 
or they're particularly out of condition sometimes if a lifter has had a extended period or extended break off or maybe they're coming back from you know maybe they may have taken a few weeks off for a holiday or something like that or they just need to be a little bit more conditioned for sessions but we don't want to do a full gpp phase Sometimes we'll do an e-mob with snatches or cleans maybe and it'll just get them in a little bit better conditioning that's more specific to weightlifting so it gives you a little bit more work capacity without having to derail an entire training block to GPP whereas you can kind of just stay with mostly specific weightlifting. It's still a reasonably high volume phase but this e-mob section is phase fits nicely into this kind of high volume phase and it still gives us some work capacity while still practicing some of the lifts and usually it's singles or doubles so we're not ridiculously you know negatively affecting our technique from fatigue but we're still pushing ourselves to the limit in terms of the physical capacity for that session okay so what does the literature say around every minute on the minute work uh what does it say around kind of high intensity interval training well as most of you will know there's loads of literature around high intensity interval training there's loads of stuff about the post-exercise oxygen consumption levels when you do hit versus when you do a uh, slow steady state there's loads of stuff around skill acquisition during high intensity interval training. But an interesting area you might want to take a look into is Tabata. So anybody who's done CrossFit, to be honest, most people who are doing general gym training now will have heard of Tabata. Tabata was very much research based. So Tabata was a, a Japanese coach and a Japanese uh, academic who basically looked in the early 90s, the effects of high intensity interval training, as far as I know, he used to coach speed skaters or else figure skaters and he used to use a system of 10 seconds on 20 seconds off uh, to get these these skaters up to the highest level possible of aerobic conditioning and physical conditioning for their particular sport now it's kind of funny because at the moment everyone does 20 seconds on and 10 seconds off that's just because people want to be really hardcore but the original one is 10 seconds on 20 seconds off for most of the time, if we're doing EMOM work where uh, you might have three or four reps of a deadlift or something to do, you're in around the 10 seconds on, 20 seconds off, or sorry, 20 seconds on and 40 seconds off. Most of the time, you're going to be working for a lot less time than you'll be resting for. And there certainly are benefits, but you just need to look at the specifics of your sport, the levels of conditioning you need, and you need to look at where you're going to spend the time during your training sessions. If you are a CrossFit athlete and you've been watching our videos and you're saying, geez, I'd love to be a bit stronger, you know, as a lot of people want to be, then something that will be very, very beneficial for you is looking at the Sika Strength for Fitness Athletes training program. There's multiple blocks there. You can train for months on end. It focuses on snatch, clean and jerk, back squat, front squat, thruster, push press, strict press, bench press, and deadlift. It will get all of your strength lifts rising at roughly the same time uh, and it will put some good structure on your CrossFit programming. Thanks very much for watching and we'll talk to you soon.